Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. This is my new podcast. I'm joking, I just have my microphone in the in the shot today just because, you know, why not? I thought that I would do another video, like a cannibal based video because my most popular true crime Tuesday video so far that I've posted was the Kobe cannibal. I'll link it up in the eye somewhere, whichever side it is. If you haven't seen it, it's got so many more views than all of my other ones. So I just thought you guys seem to like cannibals. So why not do another cannibal video? So I'm just going to get right into it. Catherine Mary Knight was born on the 24th of October 1955 and she was born into quite a dysfunctional family environment. So before Catherine was born her mother was married but she actually ended up having an affair with one of her husband's co-workers and at this time they were living in Aberdeen in New South Wales and that's quite a small place to live. It's one of those places where everybody knows everybody's business. So this, when this affair was outed, everybody was talking about it. So it kind of forced them out of that town and they ended up having to move. Anyway, Catherine's mother, Barbara, and her new partner, Ken, ended up moving out of that town and into a place called Maury or Moray. It's spelled M-O-R-E-E. -E. So I don't really know how to pronounce it, but none of Barbara's children from her first marriage moved with her. So it was basically just Barbara and Ken, and then they ended up having four children together, including twins, of which Catherine was one of the twins. It's reported that Catherine's father, Ken, was a violent alcoholic, and he used to be sexually violent towards Barbara and he used to actually rape her multiple times a day and Barbara would go on to tell her kids including Catherine that she absolutely hated men she she couldn't stand them she hated the thought of being with a man she hated the thought of sex it just Ken just just made her just not like men in general and she was very vocal about that to her children Catherine also expressed that she was sexually assaulted by various different family members from the age of 11. So she also suffered um, sexual violence from various people in her family. In 1969, the whole family ended up moving back to Aberdeen in New South Wales. Catherine then attended Muswellbrook High School, but she wasn't very well liked. She was actually considered to be a bully and she was a bit of a loner, but she used to pick on the younger kids. Once when she was at school, she assaulted another boy in her year and she also attacked a teacher to the point where they had to like defend themselves. They had to use self-defense against Catherine because she was physically trying to attack them and that was her teacher. It's weird because it was said that when Catherine wasn't like in one of her violent rages, she was actually a pretty pleasant student. Like she would be okay to teach normally, she'd be fine. But it was kind of if she like flew off the handle that all hell would break loose and it'd just be a nightmare. Despite being an okay student for the majority-ish of the time, she actually left school at the age of 15 and she couldn't read or write when she left but this didn't actually stop her from securing her dream job. This dream job was at the local abattoir, which is otherwise known as a slaughterhouse for animals. And she was quickly promoted to boning. Let's all be sensible here. And because of this promotion, she was given her own set of butcher's knives, like professional fancy butcher's knives that she could take home with her. Although I don't actually know if she was supposed to take them home, but she used to take them home with her. And she used to sleep with them next to her bed for convenience. Like if she ever needed them, they'd just be right there next to her bed. And she actually kept them next to her bed for her entire life. They were always there. Catherine absolutely loved her job. She was really good at it as well. She was like a natural and she loved it. She just was having a lovely time. It was her dream job. And basically all that she was doing during her time at this job was like skinning 
animals and cutting them up ready to be sold for meat. That was that was what her job was. Catherine was quite known around the town as being like quite a tough person. She wasn't scared of anyone or anything. She would stand up for herself. The minor, the most minor thing would make her really angry and she'd like kick off about it. And she just had quite like a temper that could switch. And actually then in 1973, she ended up meeting a guy at her work who was a very, very heavy drinker, just like her dad was. And he also wasn't afraid of a fight. He really liked that kind of thing too. That's just kind of the way he was. And this co-worker was a guy named David Kellett. And he was really impressed with Catherine not long after they first met. I think they'd gone out somewhere and he ended up getting in a fist fight, which he was obviously well up for and then she actually stepped in to help him and he was like my kind of woman right there so then the following year in 1974 apparently after Catherine pestered him for a little while they ended up getting married apparently just before the wedding Catherine's mother Barbara said to David basically don't marry her because she's got a screw loose and she said the following quote about her own daughter she basically said if you do anything wrong or stir her up the wrong way she will kill you and David took this advice on board but decided to just get married anyway so that I mean if you're about to get married and your future mother-in-law is like she'll kill you if if you mess up would you not be like oh have I rushed into this a bit no I wonder actually if David did regret the wedding because on the wedding night Catherine tried to strangle him because they consummated the marriage three times but after that David fell asleep because he was tired he just got married he'd had a big day and Catherine was furious because she wanted to have sex five times because apparently that was like what she thought was normal because that's how many times her parents had sex when they got married on their wedding night. So she was like, well, I need to do the same thing because that's what's normal. So then David fell asleep and she was like fuming. So she strangled him. Luckily, he woke up mid strangle and managed to get her to stop trying to kill him and they that was it like he got her off all was all was right in the marriage again but unfortunately that wasn't the only worrying thing to happen during their 10-year marriage so the couple had two children together during the course of their marriage and at one point Catherine found out that David was having an affair so she took their two-month-old baby daughter and put her on some train tracks just before a train was due because she was trying to punish David for his affair. Luckily, and thank God, there was a passerby who saw this happening and just went right over and picked the baby up just before the train was gonna come because if that person hadn't have seen that happening, God forbid, that is just horrific. She also threatened many people, often with an ax, and she would walk around like pushing her kids push chairs but like swinging them around all over the place just being really careless and just unnecessarily violent. Catherine ended up spending a bit of time in a psychiatric hospital and while she was in there she told some of the nurses that were in there helping her that she planned to kill the mechanic that was working on David's car because if the mechanic fixed the problem with David's car, David would be able to drive away and just leave her because she was always trying to kill him. So she was just like, well, I'm just going to kill the mechanic and then his car will never be fixed and then he can never leave me. I mean, solid plan in, in her defence. That was a joke. It, it's not. You shouldn't ever, you shouldn't ever do that. Not long after Catherine was released from the psychiatric hospital, David did end up actually leaving her and she didn't stay single for very long because in 1986, Catherine met another guy called David, but this time it was David Saunders and he was a local miner in the area. 
Saunders very quickly moved in with Catherine and her two children, two children with the previous David, but it wasn't long before this relationship turned violent and toxic. To be honest, I wasn't sure where to include this bit, but I just thought I'd fit it in somewhere like that made kind of a bit of sense. So Catherine's house was decorated really, really weirdly. She used to put, well, she used to decorate her house or flat with like tools and pitchforks and stuff. But like by decorate, I mean, she'd like hang like pitchforks on like the ceiling and the walls. They just have like big tools and stuff on them. So it was quite a unique living environment. I've found pictures online, so I'll include them so you can see what I mean, but I just found it really random and I didn't have a clue where to put that, but I just wanted to say it because I just find it quite, I don't know, different. Now, I absolutely hate this part, but David Saunders had a puppy or he got a puppy at some point. I think he might have had it before he met her maybe, but one day Catherine had like flown into some rage about something like she would quite often and to show him what she was capable of, she got the puppy and slit its throat right in front of David, which is just the worst. I hate anything to do with animals. I can't do it. I just hate it, hate it, hate it. Yeah, that's what she did. But for some reason, David Saunders still went on to have a child with Catherine, even though she's capable of stuff like that. They ended up having a daughter together, but not long after she gave birth, she threatened David with a pair of scissors so he left the relationship because I mean she just can't help herself can she bloody hell a little while later Catherine met another man this time a guy called John Chillingham and they were together actually for three years and surprisingly nothing happened during this relationship there was no violent incidents absolutely nothing so God knows what kind of magic John Chillingham was working, but they had, from what I could tell, a normal relationship and they ended up having a son together as well. They only ended up breaking up actually because John found out that Catherine was having an affair, so he ended the relationship because of that. But there was no violent outbursts from Catherine that we know of. This relationship with the new John, John Price, started really really well it was all going really smoothly John had some older children from a different relationship and they all really liked Catherine they all got on really well together so they ended up all moving in to Catherine's place in 1995 and everything was going really well like John had a decent job money was good their family life was good everything was just going pretty well until Catherine suggested that they get married and John Price said no he just didn't want to and this really didn't sit well with Catherine she was fuming and she basically then became violent and evil actually is how it was described she would do really horrible things to him just to like fuck him up like she got him fired from one of his jobs she basically accused him of stealing, although technically he did. He'd stolen or taken some like little first aid kits from work that weren't worth a lot at all. But she videotaped them like in the house to be like, look what John took. So he got fired for that. He ended up kicking her out of his house and they did end up getting back together a little while later, but he never let her actually move back in. He was kind of firm about the fact that she was not coming back in, but they would see each other again. In February 2000, Catherine's violence escalated. The couple got into a huge, huge argument and Catherine tried to stab him in the chest. So naturally, at the end of this fight, somehow he got away from it without being stabbed. And he ended up getting a restraining order against her, which I don't blame him because she tried to stab him in the chest. He even went as far as to tell his work colleagues and friends that if he ever went missing or if anything ever happened to him, Catherine would have killed him. Like he actually said those words to his work friends and his family. The day of the 29th of February 2000 started like any other normal day. 
John got home from work at about 11 p.m. He went home, started his usual like evening after work routine and went upstairs and went to bed. Catherine got back not too much longer after that. She then had some dinner, she showered, she went to bed after finishing her like nighttime routine, whatever. Um, she went up to bed, woke him up, woke John up. They had sex and then he went back to sleep straight after. And when he did, Catherine proceeded to grab one of the butcher's knives that she kept by the bed from wherever she was sleeping. She grabbed one of the butcher's knives and stabbed John 37 times. Now, what's really sad is apparently John woke up partway through the attack, but he'd already been stabbed so many times. He just couldn't do anything. He was clearly bleeding out and there was just nothing that he could do to save himself which is just so so sad it's just a horrible thing to think of somebody in so much pain waking up being attacked and just not being able to do anything about it. Catherine then dragged John's body down the stairs there was blood kind of trailing all down the stairs and like on the wall going down the stairs and into the hallway she then skinned him using her abattoir training from her work she skinned him once he was deceased she then cut bits off him like bit like chunks of flesh off him and then she cooked it she cooked it with like potatoes cabbage zucchini gravy she was making like a proper dinner and then she took some random concoction of pills and tablets and then she ended up passing out. So the next morning, obviously, John didn't arrive at work and his colleagues knew that he literally just said to them, if anything happens, if anything suspicious happens, if I'm not showing up, anything weird, it's Catherine. So as soon as he didn't come into work that morning, they were like, okay, there's something potentially going on here. So... They rang the police straight away and they explained the situation. And so the police went round to the house straight away that morning. When the police arrived, they walked into a scene that must have been one of, if not the most horrific thing, I'm sure that those police officers working that day had ever seen and would ever see again. To the point where a lot of them actually ended up leaving the job because they just couldn't get over what they'd witnessed that day. So when they entered the house, they could see that there was blood all on the floor. They could see like smeared blood along the walls from where a body had obviously been like dragged across and dragged around. Um, that was kind of just all over the place. And as they looked into the room, into the living room, they could see a meat hook that was hanging from the ceiling and there was something hanging off it. And upon closer inspection, they realised that the thing that was hanging off it was skin. So obviously Catherine had, like I said earlier, had skinned John's body. But because of the fact that she worked in an abattoir, she worked in a slaughterhouse, she did it as a job. She'd skinned John's body so expertly that it was literally his entire body like she had skinned it like to perfection to the point where they could take the skin off the meat hook and then re they re-sewed it back onto John's body when they were like laying him to rest they could literally sew it back on like perfectly with like no issues because of how expertly she'd removed the skin from his body and hung it up. And I could just imagine how terrifying it must be just to see somebody's entire body of skin hung from a meat hook. Like that's so unnatural. I just, I just feel for those police officers so bad and obviously for John because that's horrific. The whole thing, I just find it absolutely terrifying they went into the kitchen obviously there was like food smells in the house because Catherine had been cooking like the potatoes and the gravy and all of that stuff and so when they went in they actually found a pan simmering on top of the hob and when they took the lid off John's head 
was in the pan just cooking. Police also found two plates laid out on the table with like a nice dinner prepared on them. So they had like the food, like the potatoes and stuff laid out on the plates. There was what looked to be like two nicely prepared steaks, which actually turned out to be bits of John's buttocks that she had cut off and cooked and then laid on the plate to be part of a meal. And just to add to that, the plates had little name cards next to them and they were the names of John's kids. So it was as though she was going to feed John to his own children without them knowing. The police eventually got Catherine to come around who had obviously taken all those pills and she'd passed out. But eventually when she came around, she said she couldn't remember anything. She had absolutely no recollection of anything from the night before. Like literally nothing, nothing at all. Despite the fact that she claimed she didn't know anything about this murder, she was charged with John's murder and her trial started in October of 2001. At some point during the case, weirdly, Catherine changed her plea to guilty and the judge actually adjourned the case without testimony. So she was literally taken from the court that day and taken to prison to start a sentence like immediately. And the judge actually ordered that the documents, like all of her paperwork, all of the files from the court thing, she, the judge ordered them all to be marked as never to be released. And so for the first time in Australian history, a woman had been given a life sentence without the possibility of parole. That had just never happened before in Australia. But to this day, Catherine actually still maintains her innocence. She says that she had nothing to do with it. She doesn't know anything about it, despite the fact that she pled guilty. I'm still not sure why she pled guilty. I believe she was probably just advised to do it by her counsel, but then I don't fully understand because she was likely to get life. Like, I don't know. I just find that a bit odd. But I mean, well done on the judge for saying never to be released because she was just such a dangerous woman. It's scary what she was capable of. She has appealed her conviction multiple times before, but it's always almost immediately denied. And she remains just serving out the rest of her life sentence in a women's correctional facility in Australia, where she will stay for the rest of her life. That is the case of Catherine Knight. So she wasn't actually a cannibal. She did cut bits off a person, but she didn't technically eat them. So it's cannibal-esque, but it's not like proper gory cannibal, like I know that the other video was. But anyway, regardless of that, I just find this case really interesting. I actually bought my sister a book of this case, like a proper, like, full-on book about it a couple of years ago for Christmas and it's just one of those cases that's always made me think whoa and so I knew I needed to cover it at some point. So if you enjoyed this video and learning about this case then definitely give this video a thumbs up because that really means a lot to me and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already that would be incredible. Do definitely let me know if there are any cases that you want me to have a look at. I just keep adding them to my list and I'm working my way through. I love it when I get something that I don't know too much about because I find it so interesting. But then I also just like researching cases I already know. So either way, I am a happy chap. I'm going to go now because it must be like half 10. No, it's 11 p.m. And I'm tired. I've been working literally all day. I started work at 8am this morning, worked all the way through the day. And now I'm filming because I'm really trying. I'm really trying. So subscribe for the sheer effort that I'm putting in right now. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.